Hey everybody, it's Todd Dills, your host as usual for this edition of Overdrive Radio for February 3rd, 2023, where we'll drop back into more of my November run with Oakley Trucking Leased owner-operator John McCormick out of Robards, Kentucky, that's near Henderson. You may well remember the prior podcast dug into his pride and polish winning 2021 Kenworth, christened the Bandit, giving its paint schemes resemblance to the snowman's rig and Smokey and the Bandit. Of course, everybody on on CB Radio was was going on about, yeah, there goes Snowman. And, you know, there's the Bandit. (laughs) We got into plenty about just how that rig got its name. McCormick's approach to financing, in this case, direct through MHC Kenworth, the dealer group from which he bought the rig late in 2020, and more. Today, we'll pick up with a little more about the two rounds he was making daily at the time, between Crestline Plastic Pipe and Henderson, where he unloads PVC powder from the Oakley Dry Bolt tank. PVC powder picked up down in Calvert City from the manufacturer there. Another reminder here, too, that the Bandit Rig isn't just named after the 1970s classic film, but also it's a nod to an old friend, a Yorkie that was once McCormick's ride-along partner. You tell everybody he's, he's marked everything from, from Boston to, to L.A. Bandit's since passed, but two other Yorkies are now part of the McCormick family. John doesn't take them with him on these particular daily runs, though. When I start in the morning, I don't stop. I don't stop. I run, I run straight down here, I load the hook, you know, I do it twice, and then I go home. And, and I've took them with me before because she'd be gone or something, and I, you know, and then I got to stop and let them out, and, and then and all that, so I just, I don't take them much with me anymore. Right. And of course, the ones that, the ones that got now, they don't ride very well anyway. But yeah. My my German Shepherd, she rides real good, but uh, yeah, she's she's kind of a handful to have in a truck. <laughs> Pretty big dog, right? I yeah. spoke with McCormick this morning, and after a few more OTR runs over the holidays, when the plant he hauls from was shut down for annual maintenance as usual, he's back in gear on his regular rounds. In today's podcast, we'll hear more about just how the owner operator got to where he is today trucking. He's not the only McCormick on those halls either. Both his quote-unquote little brother, Bill McCormick, and his father, Charlie, are doing the same. Both also leased to Oakley. I got a close look at Charlie's 2020 Peterbilt 567 in Calvert City at the PVC plant. You can find a few shots of it in the post that houses this podcast, overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. Navigate to the February 3 post. And, let it be known... I got some evidence on that run that people do still sometimes meet on the CB radio. That last voice there was McCormick's, calling out to an operator he met on the radio. Local up there around the house, he, he pulls out a chicken plant up there. I see, you know, just one of them guys I see every day. Yeah. I, I seen him up there where I parked the truck at. He, he stopped to, there's a pizza place right there, so he stopped to get him a pizza, and he was, he would give me fits over on the radio about, uh, he was talking about my truck looking good. He <laughs> said, he said, for a Kenworth. And I said, this is coming from a man that drives a bright orange Peterbilt. I mean, Ever since then, you know, I just yeah. we we talk to one another. Or, you know, he's usually going one way and yep. I'm going the other. You know, throughout the day because yep. he runs down. Well, they they pull for Tyson, so uh, I'm like they they go down to Murfreesboro and I think there's one Murfreesboro, Humboldt. On the other side of a break, we'll pick up with McCormick talking about the amount of fuel burned during unload of his bulk tank, and then delving into his long trucking history, the son of a pair of team operators in it for the long haul. Stay tuned for that, just after this word from Overdrive Radio's sponsor. 
When you have a diesel emergency, you don't have time to wait around for 911. Instead, call your lifeline. How's Diesel Lifeline? The only emergency rescue product to reliquify gel fuel and de-ice frozen fuel filters without the use of harmful alcohol. Always safe to use, you can pour it directly into your fuel filters without wasting time mixing it with additional diesel fuel. So this winter, if you find yourself stuck in a bind, skip the tow. Get yourself back on the road fast with Howe's Diesel Lifeline. For more information, visit howesproducts.com. You can try the Lifeline product yourself by giving a call to Overdrive Radio's podcast message line at 615-852-8530. Leave your name and mailing address and I'll send you a prize pack including Lifeline, Hal's multi-purpose penetrating oil, and other goodies from the company. That's 615-852-8530. Here's a big shout out to Stoney Hamilton of Lawrenceville, Georgia, and Angela and Vincent Reynolds, Texas. Lifeline's headed your way shortly. So, just how much fuel does that blower on McCormick's rig use airing off the product at unload? I'll say about three gallons at the time it takes me to unload. Yeah. Now when they're loading these trailers, how does that process work? They basically will we'll back in underneath the silo and... They're coming straight from the top. Yeah, and it'll come out some. Unless something has happened between now and then, and which hopefully not, because then we're going to come off the rail car, but oh, gosh. that just takes a little longer. But, but I don't think. My brother ain't called me, so, so that ain't, that should be good. Yeah, well, actually, he ought to be on his way back up by now. Is he older or younger than you? He's actually older than me. Okay. I call him my little brother, but <laughs> that's only because he's smaller than I am. Okay. He, he's about, I don't know, he's, well, I'm six foot. I think he's, he might be five, five. Now, he just, he just took after, more after my mother. Yeah. She's short. Yeah, she's so. short. My father, he's 5'3", which if I get to meet him, he may be, I'm not sure where he's at. He, he's either behind us or in front of us, I don't know. He, he drives yep. well. Um, you guys all owner operators? Yep. Or, all with Oakley? Yeah. Okay, wow. Now, who was the first to be with I was. at Oakley? Yeah. 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 And they were... Were they doing different things at the time, or they, were they? Yeah, yeah, they were doing different things. Uh, well, my brother, he didn't, he didn't drive much until uh, uh, he worked for a company that did industrial cleaning, going to tire plants and cleaning out boilers and stuff like that. Uh, up until they shut down, and then then he started driving a truck. And, Uh, he pulled flatbed for a little while, and then he got in. He went to work down at Noble, hauling uh, ammonium nitrate and stuff okay. to coal mines, and, and yeah. Then he just he decided one day he's gonna buy him a truck. So I talked him into putting it on down there at Oakley, and, and then my parents they were running team and. Running, you know, they'd run to California and stuff, and, and they was usually out. Yeah, well, they was out. Well, let's put it in, it's easier. They were home about about four days a month. Yeah. And of course, they wanted to slow down. They didn't want to work as hard, but so we talked to them about buying a truck. They put it on over here. And then just luckily, we all, you know, they sent them up here to... You, all, get, you guys all just happened to get involved on this particular... Yeah. Running. Yeah. Yeah, I talked talk to dispatcher and was sending them up here. And he sent them up here and... They, 
been here ever since. And then, were your parents talking when you were growing up? Yeah. 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 My father did, and then okay. my mother started driving later. But yeah, after you guys. Were yeah. Growing up. Yeah, but yeah, he's. Yeah, I can remember being. I don't know. I probably had to have one, two, or probably about two, I guess, because I can remember it, but. I can remember him putting me up in the seat of, uh, I don't know what model truck it was, I know it was a cab over, and yeah, scared me to death. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was, of course, then, then he quit driving for a while, went to farming, and then he went back to driving. He's been driving ever since. What's his name? Uh, his name's Charlie. A foreman. So, your brother is? Bill. Bill. Yeah. Had to think about that when I was called little brother. But. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom's name? Uh, Virginia. Virginia. Jenny. Jenny, okay. Yeah. Did you start driving when you were 18? Imagine, uh, maybe? No, actually, I, well, I was about, well, I got my license whenever I was turning, whenever I was 21. I didn't actually start driving full time until uh, 22. Okay. At 16, I moved to Kentucky. Okay. And, which is, my parents were living down here, but. Yeah, I moved. I moved to Henderson when I was sixteen, and I went to work in the in the shop working for the the same guy my father was driving for. Sure. And I worked on trucks until I turned twenty one, and then I decided, well, I'll go get my license. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, I would. Uh, I went went took a test, got my permit, and then. Uh, Every morning, I'd get up, I won't say about three o'clock, and I'd, I'd meet a guy there at the shop, and I would drive him down to Springfield, Tennessee, and we'd unload and then drive back, and, and uh, he'd drop me off back at the shop, and then I'd work on trucks and all of that. Right, right. Yeah. That's a long day. Yeah. Well, it gets even worse because whenever whenever I started or after I got my license uh, I would work on trucks all day long and then then this guy wanted me to drive all night <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, finally I, I got to the point I said oh, my son, I, I can either work on trucks or I can drive oh, trucks that's going, but, that's going to kill me eventually but, <laughs> uh, I'll get burnt out on doing both yeah. so yeah, then I, then I went to drive full time. And after, well, the company we was working for out of Owensboro hauling, hauling ice cream for, and they went under. And between that period there and a little bit, I went back to working on it for a while. And, and then I wound up back in the trucks. But that first yeah. truck you bought was an 07 feet, so that was. No, it was an 03. 03, 03 feet. I, yeah. bought it, I bought it in 07. When you were kind of growing up, did you did you aspire to drive in the home trucks or not really? I always I always knew I wanted to drive. Uh, you know, much to my father's dismay because he didn't want me to do it. But right. but yeah, I always I always wanted to drive. Yeah. Now, as far as owning one, I never, you know, I mean, yeah, I wanted to own one, but I never thought I would. I don't know, one day I went up, uh, I was pulling for, I was pulling that printing ink for that company out of Kent Key, Illinois, and I just went up to Peterbilt and there and got talking to him, but, yeah, yeah, I bought, you know, bought that first Peterbilt up there. Well, what was the incentive to do that? Were you going to make more money where you were, or where did you 
you have other plans to Yeah, at least done with the folks I was with. Uh, but did I make more money? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, I mean took I, a while. I probably made probably made a little more money. Uh, but if you wanna know the real reason? I got tired of putting money into other people's trucks and then them trading them trucks off. Uh, <laughs> so, so you put money into the trucks to, to make it look good. Yeah. And look how you want it. And then they, yeah, and then you're... Yeah, then they, they trade it off and give them a big truck. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, and, if somebody else had done that, you know, then you got you got their truck. You wasn't, you yeah. wasn't too bad, but, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so... Decided that you know, I'll just buy one, and, you know, but I can do what you know, do whatever I wanted to. Yep. Of course, then I said I bought that truck in 07, sometime in 08. The company we was hauling for that made the printing ink, their main customer went bankrupt and sold out. So they lost that contract, which cut our loads all the way down. So, and the people I was with, they kept telling me, oh, it's, it's going to get better. It's going to get better, you know. And I'm like, it needs to get better right now, you know. I mean, right. And uh, so, yeah, I went, I went shopping around and, you know, talking with different carriers and stuff. And. February of uh, 09, I, I come over to Oakley and been here ever since. And my main reason for that was, was was I didn't want to go somewhere where I had to compete with company trucks. And Oakley, I didn't have to worry about that because we're all owner operators. So yeah, Still that way? Yeah, still that way. Oakley owns the trailers, but they don't own a truck. And the mileage, and you know, the mileage pay, and you know, the, you know, they take care of the plates, permits. There's no trailer rental fee. Uh, all that is, you know, of course that was a incentive too. You know, at the time, my my parents were driving for Shaper. And you know, they they wanted me to talk to them, come over there, so I called them and, exit right, then turn right. You know, and they're like, Well, you know, well you know Yeah, you can you can do this and you know, but anything over I think it was eight hundred or a thousand miles, you know, they were paying like eighty seven cents a mile to their and I'm like my, you know, my operating expense was sixty cents a mile. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah, that's you that's know. not gonna work. Yeah, so uh, I can't do that. So yeah, uh, made moved to Oakley, and uh, you know they exit right. They, exit they are right. a great bunch of people. I mean, you know, like you walk. I walk in that office, uh, you know, I would say half of them people know who I am whenever I walk in there. Yeah. And of course, I am bad right. names, so... <laughs> you might not know who they are. I can't remember who they are, but... Uh, but now, most of them, I, I don't know. Of course, I've been there for 14 years. I know. This stuff we're doing here... Uh, Everything I'm doing is based on percentages. Okay. Um, now this is where I might have it off a little bit, but okay. I want to say anything under it used to be back years ago. Like I said, I've been doing this same thing forever, so right. I can't even tell you what the mileage pay is anymore. Right. Uh, used to anything under, I think it was 250 miles. But 
that could be might be off on that. But okay. anything less than 250 miles was was percentage. Anything over that was mileage. So because we're less than 250 miles, we're we're on percentage. Uh, but it was based on a on a one way figure, not the not the round trip. <laughs> this is probably less well, than now, this is probably less than two hundred fifty miles round trip though. Yeah. 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 Now I think these loads out of here coming out of here. Uh, now these are based on on round trip because we do them every day. Yeah. Uh, well, just like Crestline has anywhere from, well, their lowest has been about 12 loads a week up to as high as 28 loads a week yeah. every week. Uh, now, the, we got two trucks down here that run Louisville, and that's pretty much a straight 14 loads a week. Get, they get two loads a day every day. Yeah. So yeah, that's the. Uh, I would say it's based on a round trip. Yeah. Uh, now the other, you know, I'm not sure. You know, they get they get some loads out of here every now and then. Company up in Oklahoma ordered ordered a, I don't know a bunch of loads by truck so so they're doing those too but, but now those those would all be mileage pay there you know. and but in terms of your your fuel surcharge are you just getting paid fuel surcharge on all miles here yes basically yeah, yeah we get we get fuel surcharge on all miles. Right Spotted here. across the median, headed the other way, the sharp 389 of Bill McCormick, John's brother, headed north toward the Crestline facility from the Calvert City PVC complex we were on our way to. Find time for a little good natured ribbing, as it were. Uh, that was a beer, Yeah. Yeah, they're not as classy as me. <laughs> <laughs> both, both him and my father both have Peter Bills. Yeah. Are they older? I got, I got more class. Yeah. No, actually, uh, Bill got his truck. He got his truck about three or four months after I got this one. Okay. Uh, now, Ned's truck is, I won't say his is in 2020. Or it might have been 2019. I ain't real sure. As noted earlier, it's a 2020 Pete 567. I'll confirm that with Charlie McCormick just 30 minutes or so down the road in Calvert City. Yeah, with the with the fuel surcharge and the and the discounts that we get. Yeah. Uh, we usually, well, depending on your fuel mileage, because it, it can vary a little bit depending on your fuel mileage, but. Uh, we very seldom we pay right around two dollars a gallon as far as out of pocket. That's your cost, yeah. 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 Of course if you got better fuel mileage it'll go down or you know, but how do you handle uh accounting and profit and loss statements? Do it all yourself? I send everything to ATBS. ATBS, okay. And we got a uh, we got a deal with ATBS yep, yep. where their charge comes out of our settlement, and I just yep. I just send everything to them, and they yes. yeah. I used I used to do all that myself, and then they got that they got that deal with them, and yeah. you know, yeah, of course they probably don't like me because I'm the world worst at sending in receipts and stuff. <laughs> you know, I used to have stuff them all in an envelope and drop them in the mail and then, you know, now they, everything's got to be scanned and stuff and I kind of procrastinate on that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, 
I'll be honest with you, I can make this truck go down the road and I can get the load from one point to the other. But the business side of it is I'm, I'm bad at. I think I'll call that a little of the old false modesty, as it were. Before McCormick had ATBS as, a, as an accounting partner with his first truck, he was indeed quite closely attentive to cost per mile fluctuations day to day, week to week, and did it all himself. He's still attentive to it too, even if he doesn't do all that calculation, which all led us into further discussion of costs. Fuel is, of course, his largest cost, but the truck payment is a sizable one too. He's a couple years into the note on the 2021 W900L. Yeah, truck payments are right up our way. Yeah. What do you think about uh, this truck in three years when you get it paid off and he's going to continue to run it? Oh, yeah, I'm planning on it. As long as it ain't giving me a whole lot of trouble, yeah. uh, I'm planning on keeping it. The mileage on it will probably be you know, fairly low compared to a lot of other five-year-old trucks Yeah. out on the road, right? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be right at about, well, right at 500,000. So. Right at 500. Yeah, yeah, because I do, uh, yeah, I do about 100, about, yeah, right at 100,000 miles a year. Yeah, okay. As long as it ain't giving me no trouble or nothing, uh, I'm, I'm planning on keeping it. Yeah. That's when your basic warranties run out too, right? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think most of the warranty will be out at three hundred thousand. Oh, good. But I'll yeah. hit. I guess the five hundred is that when you purchase the extension, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, there'll be some stuff that you know. I mean, I, I think like the, the rear ends are covered for a million miles. Okay. Uh, I think the transmission's covered for. Uh, More than three. Yeah, I think it's covered more than three, you know, it's just, hopefully give me the opportunity to, to go to Matt's, which I've been going to Matt's, you know, just as an attendee, yeah. since I was probably 12 years old. Yeah. yeah. It's close. <laughs> I thought, you know, uh, I always thought going up there, I thought, man, I'd love to, you know, have the truck take up there one day and then. Last year, you know, I uh, hopefully does a podcast, and I listened to that podcast, and they said, you know, yeah, everybody wanna, you know, would like to do that. We would be willing to sponsor you. Of course, I was on the phone at seven o'clock the next morning, calling, calling old uh, Jeremy Kelly up, you know, and I'm like, hey, I want to do that. You know, <laughs> I, I always wanted to do that. So you were in the. The, the truck show out there. Yeah. Yeah. With the trailer. With the trailer. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm doing it again next year. That would be this year, of course. This point, Matt's is fast approaching right at the end of next month in Louisville, Kentucky, as usual. Well, they have a company party every year. Of course, the last two years they didn't have it because of the COVID deal. But uh, this year they had it. Yeah. They decided that they wanted to do a truck show down there at the party just with with company trucks. So I took I took it down there and down in Arkansas. Yeah. 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 One third place down there. Cool. So out of I think there was say there's twenty three or twenty five other trucks there. I don't remember exactly. I'd have to go back and look. You hadn't done much some truck show stuff before that? No. No. No, I've never <laughs> done it. Gotcha. Whenever I went up there to to Louisville, you know, I, I learned a lot. Like I gotta do a whole lot more cleaning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun to go. Yeah. I enjoy it and I've I've met a lot of great people up there. Yeah. But some of them trucks that I, I can't compete with. Yeah. You know, uh, I can't work every day and, and compete with some of them that come in up there. <laughs> you know. 
but it's it's fun to do. If you're headed to the Mid-American Trucking Show this year, catch McCormick's Bandit 2021 Kenworth W900L out on the truck show lot in Louisville. And know that we'll be hosting our annual Partners in Business seminar with ATBS there too, where ATBS VP Mike Hosted will join our own Gary Bucks for a walk through the recent past as regards owner-operator revenue, costs, bedrock income performance strategy. The mind, of course, to arm you with information to take into the near and more distant future. Keep tuned to OverdriveOnline.com for more information about that session. Meantime, you can register for Matt's itself via TruckingShow.com. Here's a big thanks again to John McCormick for bringing me along for the haul this past November, and a big thanks to you for listening. If you haven't yet, if you're enjoying these episodes, give us a review or a thumbs up out there on whatever podcast platform you are using. Overdrive Radio is on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, among others. Here's thanks for that in advance. It certainly helps folks find the show. I know that. You can get in touch with any feedback via our podcast message line at 615-852-8530. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter and overdrive contributor to Long Haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis the Snake Man himself, Wamek, Terry Two Socks Richardson on bass, keys by Tishomingo Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor Matt Cole, social media coordinator Holly Young, Executive Editor Alex Lockie and Intrepid Video Editors Lawson Rudisel and Andrew Quinn. Find Overdrive Radio sponsor Howes at H-O-W-E-S, houseproducts.com. See you next time.